So I'm from Gardendale, Alabama. Yep. And <laughs> thank you. And growing up, I went to Gardendale's First Baptist Church. And there was this particular message in our church that was ever present. Like I heard it from my first grade Sunday school teacher all the way up to our head pastor during one of his sermons. And that message was, everyone has a hole in their heart. And it's a hole that leaves them feeling lonely and unfulfilled. And some people try to fill this hole with drugs and alcohol. Some people try to fill this hole with money and success. Some people try to seek the approval of others. But the one thing that can fill that hole in everyone's heart was Jesus. Uh, <laughs> And that's why it was part of our job as Christians to lead others to Christ, minister to the lost, uh, share God's word with them, and show them how they can live better lives with Jesus in their hearts. Now, I had been baptized uh, at six years old, um, and I was nothing as a kid if not an anxious little rule follower. So I would hear this in church, and I would think, well, okay, if this is what God wants me to do, then I have to try to lead others to Christ. There are a few roadblocks with that plan, though. Um, first of all, I was in Alabama uh, going to a Southern Baptist mega church in a town that already had 25 different churches. Everyone around me was already a Christian. Like, the bubble was real. Like, who was I going to talk to? And on top of that, like, I was awkward as hell. I didn't know if I could carry on a conversation like that. Asking my friends to the movies was hard enough as it was without me going, oh, by the way, have you heard the, the good news about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? But I still felt like I needed that opportunity. Like This was my community. And if I wasn't participating in my faith, I was worried they'd think I was faking it. And then I would end up lonely and unfulfilled. So eventually I get to high school, and every now and then our high school ministry planned what we called mission trips. These were trips where we would go, uh, do some kind of community service or volunteer work, and lead some praise and worship. And I liked going on these. I, I genuinely thought they were a lot of fun, and it gave me a chance to fake my way through socializing. Uh, so our high school ministry plans this what? Sorry, wow. Our high school ministry plans this one mission trip to go clean up a smaller church in a struggling lower income neighborhood that was predominantly African American. And our high school ministry was predominantly not African American. Yeah, strap in, this is a white savior mission. So the day comes, the kids and the youth ministers, we all load up in the vans, we take the road trip there, and this neighborhood is rough. I mean, we're talking broken windows, graffiti, garbage everywhere, you know, like outside. But the church is this nice, quaint little white building in the middle of it all. And their pastors come out, and they are very sweet and kind and helpful. So we go in, and we start helping them clean the place up. This was also the day of that church's big community barbecue. This was an event where everyone in the neighborhood, whether they went to the church or not, could come and get something to eat. So we go out to the parking lot, we pop up some tables, we lay all the food out in a buffet-style spread, you know, pulled pork, baked beans, potato salad, and people start showing up and filling their plates. Now, before we started doing all this work, before we even got off the van, our youth ministers took the time to tell us, now keep in mind, not everyone coming to this barbecue goes to the church. So this might be a good time for you to try to minister to someone. So I'm standing there with my plate of food, and I look over, and I see these two guys who look like they might be about my age. One's kind of taller, he's wearing a hoodie and a gold chain, and the other one's my height, he's wearing a do-rag, a bright red tracksuit, which is unzipped to show that he is in better shape than I ever will be in my entire life. To me, these were two pretty tough-looking guys. And for some reason upon seeing them, this kid, in his polo shirt and khaki pants, thinks to himself, all right, Bowen, this is your chance. I have the tiger, let's go make some new Christians. So I go over, we start talking, they're very chill, it gets off to a good start, and then I start trying to work my way into it. I'm like, 
So do you guys go to the church? Is that something you might be interested in? Do you know Jesus? I'm not being very subtle at all. And they know, they are on to me. They know exactly what I'm doing. Like they immediately look at each other like, so the guy in the do-rag looks me in the eye and he goes like, hey man, let me ask you something. In the Bible, when the Pharisees asked Jesus if he was the son of God, what did he say? And I was like, oh, that's easy. He said, um, uh, uh, he said, uh, and my mind went blank. I couldn't think of it. I couldn't think of anything. Like I'm going through all my years of Bible story knowledge and nothing is coming to mind. And eventually, like, I'm stammering, and the guy in the do-rag cuts me off and goes, Luke 2270. And when they asked him, are you then the son of God? Jesus responded, you say that I am. You say it. Jesus never said he was the son of God, so why should I believe that he is? And I had nothing. Because I was not prepared for good questions. And eventually, I just am kind of like, Oh, yeah, you know, that's a good point. Anyway, you guys have a good day. And I just move off to the side because I'm so embarrassed in that moment. Like, I can't even look back at them because I've been going to church my whole life. I'm supposed to know this stuff. And now here I am getting schooled in my Bible knowledge by two complete strangers who I thought were non-believers. But then again, they never actually said. Maybe I was just making a judgment based on how they looked. And maybe they could tell that I was trying to be something I wasn't. And if that was the case, then what did that say about me? Like, if this is what God wanted me to do, then why did it feel so unnatural? And so we get to the end of the trip. We're on the vans taking the road trip back to Gardendale. I'm telling youth ministers about this. And of course, they're trying to be optimistic. They're like, well, now you know. You know, for next time. And I remember thinking, I don't think there's going to be a next time. I learned that that wasn't my calling. And it would be a few years later before I learned that the more I tried to do the things I thought I was supposed to do, that's when I felt that hole in my heart the most. Thank you.